Around 2 billion people across the globe suffer from micronutrient deficiencies. Micronutrients, also known as vitamins and minerals, are crucial elements required for life. In the body, micronutrients act as cofactors. Cofactors are chemicals or ions that assist enzymes in catalyzing biological reactions. Without the appropriate cofactor, enzymes could not function. Therefore, micronutrients are necessary for biochemical reactions in the body to take place, especially those involved in metabolism and tissue repair. Most micronutrients cannot be produced by the body alone and must be obtained from the diet. While only needed in trace amounts, many people do not consume enough vitamins and minerals, especially in developing countries. Micronutrient deficiency is a worldwide public health concern and can lead to impaired growth, blindness, cognitive disorders, and birth defects, and is responsible for approximately 2 million childhood deaths per year. There have been numerous methods attempted to address micronutrient deficiency, notably the fortification of food staples. Common examples of fortified foods include iodized salt, enriched with iodine, and milk, often enriched with vitamins A and D. In developing countries, food fortification is the preferred method of micronutrient distribution as opposed to pills, as it can reach a wider population, is integrated into normal meals, and does not require a separate supplementation capsule, which some can be mistrustful of. However, the goal of globally implementing fortified foods faces a specific challenge. Micronutrients degrade during storage and cooking. Heat, light, moisture, and oxidation damage micronutrients, impairing their absorption in the body or significantly changing their taste so the food becomes unpalatable. How can we improve micronutrient stability in fortified foods to better address micronutrient deficiency? Recently, scientists from MIT and collaborating institutions have engineered specialized microparticles that encapsulate and protect micronutrients from damage. Many strategies were tested for synthesizing these microparticles, the simplest of which involves mixing the micronutrient with an FDA-approved polymer called BMC. BMC was selected from over 50 potential polymers for having the optimal permeability, pH sensitivity, and stability. The BMC polymer and micronutrients were emulsified in oil, and when added to water, a microparticle forms capturing the micronutrients inside. Scientists were able to individually encapsulate 11 different micronutrients, as well as co-encapsulate four micronutrients together. Co-packaging would allow for broader and more efficient micronutrient delivery if enacted. In order for the microparticle to be successful, it had to be stable during storage and cooking, but degradable in the stomach to release its contents. First, scientists tested the microparticles to see if they could properly release the micronutrients in the stomach. The stomach is a very acidic environment and is at body temperature. When subjected to these conditions, the microparticles efficiently release their contents. Second, the microparticles were exposed to UV light and boiled for two hours to test their stability in storage and cooking conditions. In both cases, the encapsulated micronutrients were able to persist while the unencapsulated micronutrients degraded. These promising results led to tests in mice to track the microparticle movement and release in the digestive system. The microparticles were encapsulated with a special fluorescent dye that changed colors when the microparticles released their contents, allowing scientists to track if the contents were encapsulated or released. Mice consumed the fluorescently loaded microparticles, and then their digestive systems were imaged at varying time points. These images show that at first, both encapsulated and released contents exist in the stomach. Then, as the particles are digested and move into the intestine, where nutrient absorption occurs, they are opened. Researchers then showed that mice given vitamin A-loaded microparticles achieved similar levels of absorption as mice given free vitamin A, indicating the microparticle delivery did not significantly impact absorption levels. Collectively, these results indicate that microparticles allowed for proper digestion and absorption in mice. The system was then translated into human studies using iron as the micronutrient of interest. The iron-loaded microparticles were loaded into maize porridge, a common staple in low-income countries, and baked into bread. Initial results showed decreased absorption of iron using the microparticles compared to unencapsulated iron and indicated the microparticles released their contents too slowly. The polymer coating was reformulated, and a subsequent study found no significant difference in iron absorption between the people who consumed the microparticle encapsulated iron versus free iron. In conclusion, these engineered microparticles enhance the stability of micronutrients to light and heat damage while facilitating micronutrient release and absorption in the digestive system, and they could be used to improve fortified foods. In order to practically utilize this technology globally, many other factors need to be considered, such as how to efficiently manufacture the microparticles at low cost. It is also necessary to consider regionally specific regulations and needs. 
Overall, this microparticle delivery system shows promise for reducing micronutrient deficiency and is a clear example of how engineering is used to address global health issues.